Today we're going to investigate the effectiveness of antibiotics on bacteria. So we're going to be looking using agar plates, growing bacteria and seeing how well the antibiotics kill the bacteria. So the first thing you need to do is get a sterile area. So I'm going to use this infector and I'm going to clean my surface. Just in front of me that I'm using. This will stop any cross-contamination when I get the agar plates out. Then I'm also going to wash my hands. I'm just going to use antibacterial gel that I've got here, just to make sure then that when I open the agar plate, that my hands don't have any unnecessary germs on there and cause cross-contamination. So first I need to do, I need to get my agar plate, a pre-prepared one, ready that has been seeded with bacteria. So inside here I have bacteria all ready. Now it's important that I try not to cross-contaminate and keep the lid open too much because we don't know then what bacteria and etc. we're going to be growing. The hazards then in this prac, obviously there's bacteria and germs inside here. Close contact or contact with it then, we have a risk then of that we could catch some certain diseases. So if by chance we do touch it, you need to immediately go and wash your hands. Second one then, we have the Bunsen burner here. This is used then for convection currents to keep the air as sterile as possible around the agar plate. Obviously, if we get too close, we can burn ourselves as our risk of control measure and make sure we're at a safe distance away from the Bunsen burner. So, I've got my first agar plate. I have four different antibiotics here, which we are going to use. I then have some filter paper which we are going to soak with the antibiotics and we're going to place inside the agar plate and, inc and incubate for a couple of days. So the first thing I need to do is I need to sterilise my tweezers. So I'm going to go onto the roaring flame and I'm just going to place them inside the blue flame just to sterilise them. And then I'm going to go back to my safety flame so I know that I can see it. Then I'm going to grab one piece of my filter paper and I'm going to put it inside my antibiotic A and I'm going to soak this paper okay then I'm going to put it inside my agar plate in one corner but I'm only going to lift it at the angle I'm going to lift at the angle to minimize as much contamination as I can Now we have a problem. Once again then, I'll put my forceps back so because we're going to use the next antibiotic so I just want to make sure that they're still sterile. I'm then going to grab my next filter paper and I'm going to do the same for antibiotic B. I'm just going to turn it round. I'm going to pop it this side. And then again. What I need to do with that, I need to clearly label up my agar plate. So I'm going to split my agar plate into four sections. So I'm just going to draw four lines, two lines, and then I'm going to label A, B, C, and D. So I don't forget. Okay. Try not to draw over the whole section because it'd be really, really hard then to see any results as we are looking through it. Then I'm going to use tape and I am going to securely tape up the agar plate as I don't want anything left in inside. Two. Then I'm going to do the exact same for another agar plate and we're going to incubate it for two to three days to see what results we get. <laughs>
so this is the agar plate a couple of days after we've left it to grow we incubate it incubated it in the school incubator um, and this is what happened as you can see there's different areas of growth depending on how well effectively the antibiotic works this one here in the middle had a really good um, antibiotic growth so that means that um, a large proportion of that antibiotic was able to kill the bacteria this yellow stuff here is the bacteria so we call this the inhibition zone okay um, as you can see depending on um, what antibiotic was put on each um, filter paper and then placed on the agar plate depends on how well it grows so you'll be able to work out which antibiotics are the most efficient um, sometimes in the exam then they might ask you to do one of two things they might give you um, squared paper and ask you to calculate like how many squares a um, zone covers so if I just did like kind of an example obviously this won't be exactly what you get given because you'll get given kind of like squared paper so they might give you squared paper and ask you to count how many squares it covers so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen okay that's just a rough estimate but one thing they might ask you to do is just calculate how many squares it covers and then obviously different sizes should cover different amounts of squares so that one only covers 16 squares so that one there is more effective because it covers more squares the other thing they might ask you to do especially if you're a higher tier candidate is to work out the radius of um sorry not the radius the area of the circle and to do that you would use pi r squared which involves the radius so you would need a ruler so let's just get one up um, a ruler and you would have to measure the entire diameter of the circle and in this case imagine it's got numbers on it so it'd be so if i was to count if i was to count this across i would have let's move up a little bit i'd have one two three four five okay so the diameter is five centimeters so i'd half that to work out the radius so five divided by two that would be 2.5 my radius would be 2.5 i'd input that into my calculator pi um 2.5 squared and that would give me a value of so i've inputted that into my calculator and it would give me 3.14 and that would be in centimeters squared okay because i worked out the area of that circle obviously then i could go on to work out the areas of other circles and they should give me different values so you, that one here should give you the largest area so you you would consider that the most effective antibiotic um, obviously that is a more accurate way of calculating the efficiency or the accuracy of the antibiotic filter paper plates um, compared to the square method which is is accurate enough to work it out but this this method would give you a more accurate result thank you